This is a paper clip. This is what I guess most people see, a simple, ordinary paper clip. Some of you, maybe the creatives amongst you, might see something else, a magical tool. And this is going to be about what Mike Giver has taught me in my childhood and when I grew up, and how to create awesome results. Attention, there is going to be a spoiler. Creating awesome results is all about you, it's all about people, it's all about you working together, it's all about collaboration. So far, I don't think that's a big surprise. However, to get there has been quite a personal journey, it's been quite a bumpy journey, and there has been a few takeaways how it works which I would like to share with you today. I have a question to you. What did you want to become when you were a child? Can you remember? It's been quite some time ago. I guess some were doctor, policeman, I don't know, astronaut at the NASA maybe. Nowadays, probably more influencer, gamer, soccer star in the current times. And all the creators might think, hmm, when I was young, it wasn't so clear what I want to become. For a simple reason, you don't fit in a box. My dream, I wanted to become an inventor. Whenever I saw a paper clip, I didn't see a paper clip. I saw something that you could do many, many, many things with. And when I was a child, I soon realized my brain kind of works a little bit different. And all the creators in the room, I think, know exactly what I talk about. If your brain works different, you're in a situation where, of course, you also don't fit in a box. But the world around you, everybody tries to fit you in a box. And to resist that, not so easy. And at a certain point, you start losing self-confidence because you can't figure out what box to fit in. There seems to be no box around. The result of that one is, you start to feel, or I started to feel, when I was young, still a child, also a teenager, I started to feel pretty, pretty alien. And I think all of you have experienced how that feels. You don't fit the box. You want to belong somewhere. No one likes to be an alien, especially if you're a teenager. Horrible feeling. Remember? I was lucky, I discovered a profession called designer, a bit by pure luck, pure coincidence, and I thought, this is exactly it, fantastic. I kind of felt, this is what I'm really good at, this is what the job description told me, kind of fits my dream, at least, that's what I thought. When I started studying, there was a moment when reality started to kick in. At first, I thought, super cool. I'm surrounded by like-minded people. We had the same talks, the same language. We kind of thought the same. But if you want to become a designer, or in my case, a product designer, um, you need certain product design skills. And I realized I don't have that. I can think like a designer, like a creative, but I can't design like one. And that, remember, the picture of the alien, was again the moment where I felt pretty, pretty alien. Again, the feeling of not belonging, and what do you do? Do you try to force yourself in a box, or do you try to find or to shape even a new box? For me, there was a personal failure, and I had two options. I could ignore it, try harder, or I could seek help, get out of my, out of my comfort zone, challenge myself, and simply get help. I was pretty lucky because I have a very close friend, he's my best friend, also a very creative person, and he basically saved me. And he said, come on, what's wrong with you, Julian? You have so many skills. It's unbelievable. And I said, really, which ones? I didn't know about it. For him, it was rather obvious. For me, absolutely not. And he said, yeah, look at yourself. You are like a MacGyver. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? MacGyver, MacGyver. And I remember the guy from my childhood, the hero, is that you are like him. You see a problem, you find a creative solution. So he really helped me 
to discover my strength. And I had no clue I had these. And I think all of you have amazing skills and strengths inside you that maybe you haven't discovered yet. So you want to be discovered. During my studies, I was also a bit lucky. Again, a bit coincidence. We were doing a project together with two other guys, my friends, and we did win a design award with a beer crate that had wheels. Nothing special, really not, but it did teach me something. It did teach me, or I, at least I kind of discovered, that if you work in a team, good results or great results can be created. And that for me was an aha moment, together with the feedback from my best friend that said, you are MacGyver. And by the way, he really hated me sometimes for that. Because why do you always find this solution? But I think he also admired it quite a bit. What am I good at? I'm really good at finding unusual connections, connecting dots, but this was not the key thing. I discovered a talent which is about spotting talents and bringing people together, connecting people. And I realized that collaboration can be the foundation for the creation of really, really awesome results. So, what does it take for world-class collaboration? A one-off success, that doesn't count. You have to be able to repeat it, to crack the code, and what is this about? What did I learn in my last 20 years of professional work? Um, and the big question is, can any one of you work in a team? Is it that, that simple? You follow simple rules and then it works? Hmm, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. How did it start? Getting out of the comfort zone. I had a friend that said, it's interesting, Julian, how you do it. You don't approach things from the bottom, you approach them from the top. That means you have to be willing and able to push yourself out of the comfort zone, a little bit like today. I don't like to talk too much about myself, but thanks to TEDx, I was being forced to it. Put me out of my comfort zone, as you can imagine. Um, and you have to be able to withstand all the expectations that basically society, parents, close friends try to impose on you. You have to develop a certain resilience if not, you're going to end up in a box where you maybe never wanted to end up in. Almost happened to me as well. Fail and understand why. Learn from it. Again, this is being said simple. At a certain point in my life, I discovered, hmm, it's not so easy because there is a few things I will never learn. And that's the point where you realize, okay, I need someone in a good team that can help me cover my back, be a side man or woman, and even worse, there is things you don't understand because they are your blind spot. So you kind of get the feeling there is something that I just don't get. And then you need someone that can kind of help you and point you out when you are in your blind spot zone. I was lucky, I'm a pretty lucky bastard. I have a partner, also in the business, that basically does that. He's a real creative, not like me, that's more the thinking creative, he's a real, real creative guy, and we teamed up happened by pure coincidence over what we are doing. Lucky, but you have to be able to admit and allow for someone that can basically help you uncover your blind spots. Then it's about uniting skills. Putting many, many different people together in a team, a very heterogeneous group, of course, difficult to steer. Um, and there also is not that easy. Just putting people together, just uniting them, Mm, we also tried this one. Doesn't work. It's really about giving them a direction, a clear task, a clear briefing. And I think all of you have been facing the question of purpose. What's the purpose? Why do I do this? And of course, we are a very project-driven organization. There is a client, there is a project. The briefing is clear, and then we give the task to the team and let them run and do it. And at a certain point, they came, yeah, but what's the purpose? Purpose of the company, why do we do all this? Can you give us a purpose? And guess what? We made a very classical mistake. We gave them a purpose, and it completely didn't work. Because they wanted to be part of the purpose development. They wanted to collaborate with us on developing a purpose, which is, in the end, what we did. So, 
is not only about what does the client want and why do we do this, it's also about why does the business you work in do this. Why are we all signing up for this one? Why should we go all in? Why should we create awesome results? That was my key learning. Don't give them purpose, work it out together. Anything that's written on the wall, ignore it, work out a purpose, then you don't need to hang it up on the wall anymore. Make sure it's being lived. Give them trust and ownership. And this is one of my favorite learnings from the last, I would say, past 20 years. It's so easily said. And in German, there is a super nice word for it. It basically means Vertrauen schenken. Don't expect to get anything back, but you have to make the jump into the cold water, empower the team, give them the freedom, and accept if they come back with a different result that you didn't expect. Of course, there needs to be a direction and a purpose clear, but give them the freedom to do it. And then you really have to sit on your hand as a leader. Don't interfere, because they're going to say, ah, you know how it works? Please, fine, then you do the sketch. Shouldn't happen. That's real empowerment. That's real giving trust. Teamwork and collaboration is also about ownership. And we realized the bigger the team, the smaller the ownership. So make sure the team has the right size. Too many heads. If you split ownership, it also doesn't work. Make sure that the team has a proper tech team size. So to answer that question, my experience, not anyone can work in a team, but most people can work and perform and create amazing results in the right team and in the right setting. That, of course, is where experience and also a bit of wisdom kicks in how to do that. So, what does it all come down to? If you ticked all the boxes, there is a purpose, there is skills united in a team, what's my key learning? For me, it's about real-life collaboration. Is this is where magic flies, where creativity really, really sparks, where you can provoke a coincidence that doesn't work on Teams, that doesn't work on Slack. This is where the spontaneous creative coincidence can be provoked. And this is about real-life collaboration. Said it before, get out of your comfort zone and just try. Nothing can happen to you. I was afraid so many times to get out of my comfort zone, and then I had good colleagues, leaders, that pushed me a little bit and said, you can do it, trust in yourself, it's going to work. And last but not least, work with what you have. You have amazing skills. There might be even hidden skills that you haven't discovered before. Go and explore, work with what you have. This is basically the trick that MacGyver was always using. He had a paper clip, and you could almost build a rocket spaceship with it. Unbelievable. So whenever you see a paper clip, think about what could you do with it. Kind of like foster your creativity. Thank you very much, and unleash the MacGyver in you. Thank you.